concepts. Good afternoon, my wonderful viewers. We are very grateful unto God for what He has done. Blessed and honor be unto His name for His faithfulness, for preserving us from the hands of the enemy, and may His name forever and ever be lifted this very afternoon. This is our global school of transformation, and your host is Prophet Anderson. I believe that by the grace of God, He has sustained us 
and God is still preserving us from the hands of the enemy. Wherever you are watching us from, I just want you to connect your spirit, connect yourself, connect your soul, and then share the video to be a blessing to someone who is out there. The Bible declares that the entrance of his word brings forth light and it gives understanding to the simple. So I just want you to share the video to, I mean, bring deliverance into the life of someone who is out there because the Bible has declared that in the latter days, I mean, the gospel of Jesus Christ will be spread abroad. So wherever you are watching us from, distance is not a barrier. What you need to do is to share the video to be a blessing to someone who is out there. And I believe that your life will never and ever be the same. Beloved, in the Lord, I want us to share a word of prayer this very afternoon before I bring your way the undiluted word of God. Let's pray. Our most heavenly Father, we thank you this very day for the great opportunity given unto us once again. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for what you are doing. We thank you for what you are about to do in the midst of your people. Lord, I pray the Bible declares that the entrance of your word brings forth light and it gives understanding to the simple. I pray this very afternoon that Lord, you will help us with divine understanding in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Glorify your name, O oh God, and do what no man can do. We give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed with thanksgiving. Come on, shout a better amen. Beloved in the Lord, it's a great opportunity for me to come your way once again this very afternoon. Today happens to be the ninth day of March 2022. Gradually, we are moving ahead. You know, life is a progressive, a progressive stuff. We don't need to go back. We can never go back and restart again. There is something that when you, I mean, you, you lose it, you cannot get it again. When you lose money, you can get it again. But time is something that... Is very precious to humanity to mankind as well as god that when you lose time you will never be able to get it back so it is something that we need to be i mean cherish it very in a, in a high esteem as believers as workers in god's vineyard i want us to learn what i have entitled personally understanding the prophetic journey to the promised land the prophetic journey to the promised land and we look at the book of first corinthians chapter i mean 10 verse 1 to 11 but for the sake of time i'm going to read only the verse 1 he said for i do not want you to be ignorant of the fact brothers and sisters that our ancestors were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea he said i don't want you to become ignorant about the fact about the journey to destiny apostle paul was trying to tell us i mean i mean the in-depth of the journey the mystery behind the journey of the children of israel from from egypt to the promised land and he said he doesn't want us to become ignorant because one of the greatest disease in the kingdom is the disease of ignorance many christians have become ignorant of the devices of the devil your ignorance is the greatest mountain that is fighting against your destiny and as a believer you must work on yourself if there is anything you must work on it is not about the demons and the principalities when you get the knowledge you will be able to work and deal with them easily the reason why many people are still retrogressing in the christendom is that we are ignorant of the devices of the devil we our ignorance has become the greatest mountain to our destiny the greatest mountain against our life therefore paul is urging us not to become ignorant of the fact there is a fact in life there is a truth in life that if you become ignorant of it you will, be, you will live a frustrating life so apostle paul is trying to open the eyes of understanding relating to the journey of, of i mean uh, to the promised land and the journey from egypt to the promised land was a prophetic journey that i personally want us to look into the in-depth of that journey you know everything that was written in the bible everything written in the bible is for our instruction in order to possess the promised land god has given unto us so everything written in the scriptures everything written in the bible is for our instruction in order to possess the promise in our calling the experience of the children of israel were a step-by-step -step, what prophetic map 
were a step by step prophetic map of our journey towards what fulfillment of our calling in Christ. The journey the children of Israel had or embarked with in the book of Exodus was a map, was a prophetic map, was a step by step prophetic map for the fulfillment of our calling to the promised land so everything that happened in the days of old everything that happened in the days of moses was a typology and it serves as an instruction for us to walk through and walk in the same path in order to possess the promise that god has declared upon our lives so you must not be ignorant of that because the journey to destiny, the journey to the promised land is a prophetic journey. And beloved in the Lord, whatever the children of Israel went through serves as a I mean instruction for us to I mean I mean for us to know or for us to learn in order to get to the promised land. God doesn't don't want us to live a frustrating life. God really want us to live a life that is full of blessing. God really want us to live a life of, I mean, heaven on earth. So when we walk in ignorance, we are trying to frustrate our own destiny. So there is a prophetic map that has been given unto us as believers. And these are the instructions in the scriptures the instructions in the word of God. It serves as a prophetic map for us to walk innate in order to possess the land at which god has predestined for us there is a land ahead of us there is a place that we are going and we can never achieve if we are not able to know the road map that is why in the prophetic perspective you need to stand on the mountain top in order to look at what is going on on the other side of the mountain so beloved in the lord there is a road there is a map that has been set ahead of us and that map is a step-by-step -step prophetic map for a fulfillment of our calling to the promised God or to the promised land. And I want us to know, you know, the children of Israel were, were going through, they went through a lot of challenges. But I want us to get first of all, let the three journeys, the three, the four journey that the children of Israel went through. The first one was leaving Egypt. Leaving Egypt representing man. Man's state of what? Bondage. Man's state of bondage. And Christ came to deliver us from that bondage. The first journey to destiny, the first journey to the promised land was that the children of Israel were in Egypt for 430 years. And it represented, I mean, it represents the, the, the children of God in bondage for, for, for so many years. And God needed to send Moses. So Moses was a typology of Jesus. And Moses came into the scene to deliver the children of Israel from bondage. So Moses was a typology of Christ. When Moses was born, I mean, I mean, Pharaoh decreed a law that every male child from day one up to three and a half years must be executed. The same thing happened in the days of Jesus. When Jesus was born, a law was decreed by Herod that children from day one up to three and a half years were, 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 must be executed. So you can see that Moses was a typology of Jesus. And Moses came to Egypt to deliver the children of Israel from 330 years in bondage. Beloved in the Lord. So you can see that man's or, I mean, initial state was full of crisis. Man was in bondage in Egypt. And I want you to understand that the journey to your promised land, first of all, starts from, from a place of being bondage, from a state of bondage to a state of new life. So Moses came into the scene and delivered the children of Israel from bondage. And what happened when he delivered them from bondage? At the end of it, the Bible declares that they were able to move out of Egypt. And that is the, I mean, the decision of man leaving bondage into a life which is the new creation. So when they left Egypt, the second journey they embarked was to go through the Red Sea. The Red Sea represent, represent the baptism of Jesus Christ. The children of Israel went through the Red Sea. And going through the Red Sea was a form of baptism. And we, can all, we all know that when we come into Christ... By believing that Jesus is the son of the living God. By believing that Jesus is God. 
and as we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, then we need to go through water baptism. The water baptism is the immersed one. We go through the water baptism. And the children of Israel, when they left Egypt, that is, they left bondage, they went through the Red Sea. Going through the Red Sea is the baptism of the new man. The baptism from your old man to the new man. So it means you are dying with Christ and resurrecting with him. So the children of Israel needed to go through the Red Sea as a form of baptism. That was the second journey. And when they went through the Red Sea, the Red sea what happened? After going through the Red Sea and they came out, they needed to go through the third journey. And that third journey is the wilderness experience. That is the wilderness experience. And that is where the problem lies. That is where many Christians get stuck. That is where many Christians are satisfied and they don't want to move to the another level. Because in the wilderness, when you get to the wilderness and you have the experience, that is whereby you'll be able to move to the promised land. So the wilderness experience is where you'll be taught. It's where you go through the training process. It's where you will learn a lot of lessons. It's where you become matured as a Christian because it takes maturity for you to enter into the promised land. If you are not matured, you will not inherit the promised land. The promised land, I'm not talking about heaven, but I am talking about heaven on earth, experiencing the power of God, experiencing the glory of God on earth. So the children of Israel were first of all in bondage and it was a typology of Jesus Christ saving us in our generation. Moses went into Egypt to save the children of Israel and they went through the Red Sea as the form of baptism and after going through the Red Sea, they got to the wilderness and that is the wilderness experience. That was when the children of Israel went through the wilderness experience and they experienced a lot of things but it's of it's unfortunate that many i mean believers many children i mean sons and daughters of jesus christ many israelites were not able to possess the promised land because on the wilderness or in the wilderness they compromised their faith in the wilderness they got stuck and they were satisf satisfied in their own situation and they wanted to go back to egypt so, beloved in the Lord, only two people were able to possess the promised land. It was Joshua and Caleb. And I want us to learn the three vital components that we need as believers as we have been taken out of bondage, as we have come out of I mean, I mean slavery, and now we are in the wilderness. What are some of the things that we need? What are some of the components that we must and um, i mean i mean we we must embrace in order for us to possess the land at which god has prepared before even i mean we were born before ages many christians have a lot of challenge in the wilderness that is whereby we got stuck that is whereby we don't want to make any progress so you can see that the children of israel had four journeys the first journey was in bondage and they were delivered by Moses as a typology of Jesus and they went through the Red Sea as the baptism of Jesus the baptism we were immersed in in the, in the water and we died with Christ and we resurrected with him and from there that does not end there Christianity does not end in baptism Christianity does not end in what wilderness experience the wilderness experience is the school of training is the school of learning and is the way of learning the ways of God so I want you to understand that is not the end of your Christian journey. You must graduate to the promised land. And even when you get to the promised land, it is, it is the reflection of where we will spend eternity. So if you are able to enjoy in the promised land, then it means eternity, that is where, that is where you are going to enjoy as well. So I want us to look at the reflection of I mean heaven the reflection of heaven must also reflect on earth enjoying heaven on earth so when the children of Israel were able to go through the baptism in the Red Sea they got to the, 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 the wilderness and that was where they learned a lot of lessons the wilderness is a place of training it is your school of training it is your school of training but it's unfortunate that that is the area that many Christians die Many Christians end their Christian work. 
But I don't want you to end there. I want you to make a progress. I want you to take a step. Move ahead. Go on. Progress. I mean persist. Because there is a place that God really wants us to get to. And the final journey that they embarked was possessing the promised land. After you have gone through the wilderness school, you need to possess the land. So the children of Israel embarked on four journeys. Number one, by leaving Egypt, that is the state, the bondage. Number two, going through the, the, the Red Sea, that is the baptism of Jesus Christ. Number three, going through the wilderness experience. And you know, on the wilderness, they spent 40 years. Instead of spending 11 days, they spent 40 years. Another school of thought says they spent 40 years instead of spending what? 40 days. So either 40 days or 11 days, beloved in the Lord, they were delayed for 40 years. And almost all the congregation of Israel were not able to get to the promised land. Because in the wilderness, that is where the challenge lies. That is where the trauma lies. That is where the school of suffering lies. That is where, I mean, many people go through a lot of challenges. And many people give up on their faith. Many people are not able to make a progress. Because in the school of wilderness, that lies the challenges of life that many Christians are not able to endure. But the Bible says, those who are able to endure to the end will be saved. Will be saved. And I want you to understand that without spiritual maturity, you can never possess the land. Without spiritual maturity, you can never go to the promised land. So if you are a Christian and you want to enjoy heaven on earth, it means you must grow your spiritual life. Your spiritual maturity is very essential when it comes to possessing your promised land. Do let me tell you something. Those who are who go through certain mediums to get rich on time, to get rich very quick, those who are not patient to go through the series of life before they get rich or before they, they, they possess what they are supposed to possess is that God has prepared these things that you are looking for ahead of you. And if you wait patiently and work on yourself, automatically one day you will get there. But if you want to take dubious ways to get to where you are supposed to take years to get there, beloved in the Lord, you will get there, but you will never last long. You will die prematurely. It means you have already destroyed what God has prepared for you, what God has set ahead of you. So anything that you are seeing people having, it's a matter of time you will also get there. But our problem lies when we get to the school of wilderness. That is the training process. The learning I mean, process. That is whereby we want to escape. We want to escape. But you can never escape even one of these steps. You can't escape because your initial state was in bondage. Now you have accepted Christ. You need to go through baptism. Either the baptism of the water, baptism of water, or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need to go through the baptism process. After going through the baptism process, God will never take away your life. You need to go through the wilderness experience. That is the greatest school. That is your place of maturity. That is your place to know Christ. And after going through the wilderness experience, there you need to possess the land. You need to possess your land. Possessing your land takes maturity. If you don't grow your spiritual life and you possess the land, beloved in the Lord, you, 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 you will get out of the system and you can die prematurely. So it is very, very important as a believer to build your Christian life. Many Christians who don't want to go through the wilderness. Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9, there is nothing new under the sun. So whatever we are going through, it was, I mean, I mean, some people had gone through. I was reading the scriptures, going through books and reading the Bible, and I got to understand that whatever we are going through, the ancient prophets, the ancient believers went through. So, so I want you to know that the days of our bondage were like the days we were in Egypt. Now we have been delivered by Moses, who was a typology of Christ. And now we have been baptized in Christ. 
whether by water baptism or Holy Ghost baptism, it does not end there. Now we have got into the wilderness, and that is where the problem lies. That is where many Christians die. That is where many Christians lose their I mean they lose their faith. That is where many Christians don't want to apprehend. That is where many Christians give up. Because the wilderness experience is your school of training. It is your school of learning. It is your school of maturity. So we are being trained. We learn to mature. And by the reason of your maturity, you are able to possess your promised land. So you cannot possess the land if you are not matured. Anyone who possesses the land without being matured will lose it. Because it takes maturity to handle inheritance. I repeat, it takes maturity to handle inheritance. So you can never possess if you are not matured. And even though if you possess, be not matured, you will lose it. So you need to go through the wilderness. Don't escape. Don't skip. As if you are escaping. To, I mean, to, to, to flatter somebody. When you escape or you skip, you are flattering yourself. And at the end of the day, you need to come back and learn it all over again. It is very, very important. I'm going to give you the three vital tools. The three vital components that you we need as believers, as we have been saved. It is not enough. Being saved, it is not enough. Once being saved, it is not enough. You must work on your salvation. Philippians 1 12, work on uh, Philippians 2 12, work on your salvation with fear and trembling. So it is not enough. You must work on your salvation. So don't think that I have been saved, I have come out of bondage. If that is enough, the children of Israel would have come when they came out of Egypt. They should have gone straight to the promised land. But they needed, they needed to go through the process. They needed to go through the process. They needed to build their Christian life. And I'm going to give you three vital components that you need. In your wilderness experience, if you want to really possess that which has been assigned ahead of you. If you have not seen it, that doesn't mean that it is not there. The thing is there. But you are not seeing it. And it takes divine revelation. It takes the word of God. It takes an insight for you to see. So if you have not seen it, that doesn't mean that the thing is not there. It is there. The problem is not you not seeing it. The problem is your sight. So you must develop an attitude of, I mean, I mean, I mean, preparing yourself on the wilderness so that you can grab that which belongs to you. And what are these three components? The three major components needed for this journey to fulfill life and to fulfill destiny. The first key that you need is vision. Is vision. It takes vision for you to know where you are and where you are going. If you don't know where you are and where you are going, beloved in the Lord, you will live a frustrating life. In the book of Proverbs chapter 29, Verse 18 says, the people are constrained. A place without vision, people are constrained. There is, they, 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 they are restricted. A nation without vision, they perish. So it takes vision for you to know where you are going and where you are. Many people are living a frustrating life because they don't have vision. It takes vision for you to be focused. It takes vision for you to know where you are going. I am not copying anybody. And I am not imitating everything. Because there is a vision that has been set ahead of me. So if your vision and my vision are different, we cannot move together. We are able to move together because my vision is different. And yours is different. So it takes vision for us to know where we are going. A man of vision will never get started. A man of vision will never be tired in life. A man of vision will never get frustrated in life. Because vision is like a driving force that drives one to another destination. And a nation with vision will never perish. A nation with vision have hope. A nation with vision will do more for their generation. 
So in the journey to your promised land, the prophetic journey, the three vital tools that you need, one of the tools is what? Vision. But you must not end on vision because vision is not enough. Why am I saying the vision is for children? <laughs> vision is for babies. Because on the last day, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh and the youth will see visions. So vision is for the youth. Visions is for the babies. Vision is for children. So you must not end on your vision. Because after having vision, there must be another step. And that step is your faith. So the second component is your faith. And why am I saying vision is for children? Vision is for children, is for babies. But faith is for adults. Why am I saying this? Faith is the revelation. The knowledge of, the, of Christ. The in-depth of knowing the personality of Christ. And revelation is for adults. That is why Paul had a vision. In the book of, I mean, Acts chapter 9. He had a vision and Jesus spoke to him. It was a visual act. But after Paul walking with Jesus, in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, he said, that I may know you. He was looking for revelation. And revelation, by having revelation, you must walk in faith. Learn the Bible, study the Bible, have the knowledge of the personality of Christ. So in the land of wilderness, on your wilderness experience, or in the wilderness experience, you must get faith. And faith is the ability to have knowledge, the in-depth of the personality of Jesus. And that is what I call revelation. By revelation, you'll be able to endure. By faith, you'll be able to subdue. Bible says Abraham did not stagger. So in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, what happened? Let's read it. Hebrews 11, 8. I love this scripture. He said, by faith, Abraham went called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went. Even he didn't know where he was going, but by faith, he went. He obeyed and he went. And what happened? In the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 33, by that same faith, men of old were able to subdue nations. So you need faith in the school of wilderness in the wilderness experience you need faith you must work on your faith work on your faith because faith is very very essential and faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of god faith will empower you to endure in tough times faith will not cause you to compromise your faith it doesn't matter what people are saying about christ it doesn't matter men of God coming out to preach certain messages contrary to the word of God. When you have faith, what is faith? The faith is the evidence of things hoped for. But I want you to understand that faith is the knowledge of the personality of whom you have put your faith in. Of whom you have trusted. Faith is the personality. Faith is the ability to know the Christ that you are serving. Faith is now and faith is a present tense. So you must improve your knowledge. You must upgrade yourself. You must know the Christ that you have believed. That is why Paul said, I am I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed. I am persuaded and I know whom I have trusted that he will be able to keep me. He will be able to sustain me. He will be able to preserve me in my wilderness experience. Because on the wilderness, there are so many turbulences. There are so many challenges. But it takes faith for you not to compromise your faith. Many Christians are moving out of their faith. Many Christians are giving up. But hear me and hear me very well. If faith is in place, nothing will stop you. If faith is in place, the storm will never bring you down. So the second key you need is faith. But faith becomes, I mean, nothing if power is not in place. If power is not in place. So the third key is the power of God. For you to be sustained on the wilderness in order to progress to your promised land. Power is essential. Power is needed.
It takes power for you to become the son of God. It takes power for you to inherit your right. So in John chapter 1 verse 12, and he gave power to them as many as they believed him as the son of God. He gave them power to become sons of God. So it takes power. Second Timothy 1 17, for I did not give you the spirit of fear, but of power, love and sound mind. So it takes power to overcome every turbulence, every challenge that you may go through in your wilderness experience. These are the three vital keys, vital tools that you need in order to endure on your promise, on your wilderness experience, on your wilderness or in your wilderness experience, in order to possess the land at which God has set ahead of you. It is a prophetic journey that we are all embarking with. There is a road map, and the road map has been given to us through the scriptures. We need to look at the road map and walk on it precisely. We need to be very vigilant, so that we will be able to know where we are going by our vision. Because looking unto Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith, and when we have the vision, it is not enough. You must also have faith. Knowing the personality of Jesus. Knowing Christ whom you have put your faith in. Knowing Christ whom you have entrusted everything under his care. That he who has begun with you will surely take you to the end successfully. But faith is not enough. You must also walk in power. Demonstrating the power of God. Because the Satan we are battling with will never give up. When he loses the battle today, he will come again. But I want you to understand with power, we'll be able to subdue nations. With power, we'll be able to conquer the devil. With power, we'll be able to demonstrate the working hand of God over nations. And nations will know that of a truth, there is Christ that we are serving. And that Christ came in the days of old to deliver the children of Israel from bondage. And now we are also enjoying in our dispensation. I pray for you that you will never miss the road. You will never be confused with the prophetic map <coughs> set ahead of us to possess our promised land. There is somewhere we are going. That's why vision is very essential. There is somewhere we are going. That is why your faith is needed. There is somewhere we are going. That is why power is needed. It takes faith for you to possess. It takes power to, for you to create wealth. For I, the Lord, gave you the power I gave you the creativity spirit for you to create wealth. Beloved in the Lord, do you have faith? Do you have vision? You are living a frustrating life because vision is, is being abused in your life. You don't know where you are going. You are always following the crowd. You are always following the noise. You are always following the sayings of men. I said something last, I mean Sunday in, in, my, in, my, in my preaching. I said, Yo, our greatest role model should be Christ, not any man, not any bishop, not any archbishop, not any, any, any apostle, not any prophet, not any pastor, not any teacher or evangelist. Our greatest role model should be Jesus Christ. If anyone takes offense of what I am saying, then it means the person wants to personalize his life as a role model to every, every body. But Jesus is our greatest role model. Because we don't have perfect mentors, but we have perfect mantles. <clears throat> Beloved in the Lord, your vision is very essential. You need vision in the wilderness experience. You need faith in your wilderness experience. And you need power to prove the devil wrong. My name is Prophet Anderson. This is your host for Global School of Transformation. I believe that you have been blessed. But I want you to say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, this very afternoon empower me with grace. Empower me, O oh God, as I am embarking on this journey, on this prophetic journey to my promised land. Lord, I need vision. I need vision. Lord, empower me and grace me with divine faith. Increase my faith. I need a strong faith. And Lord, grant me the power of the Spirit to operate in the realm of the Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for empowering me. I thank you, Lord. For your grace in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord which he bless you and extend your coast. The Lord show his countenance upon your face. I believe that you have been blessed. I believe that grace has located you. I believe that your life has never remained the same. The Lord which he bless you and extend your coast. Remember to share the video to be a blessing to someone. You have been redeemed. Don't get stuck in Egypt. You have been redeemed. Don't, I mean, I mean, reflect on Egypt. You have been redeemed. 
you have gone through the Red Sea as a form of baptism. Now you are on your wilderness experience. You are on the wilderness. You are in your wilderness experience. You need vision. Vision will cause you not to be distracted. What you are seeing aside, what you are seeing outside is a I mean attractive weapon. But when you get stuck to that thing, it becomes a destructive weapon. So you need vision. You need faith. Work on your faith. You cannot get faith without knowing the Bible. You cannot get faith without knowing the personality of Jesus. You cannot be empowered if you don't have faith. So you need these three vital components if you really want to possess your land. I see you possessing in the name of Jesus. I see you going far in the name of Jesus. I see you exploring in the name of Jesus. And I see you making an impact in your generation. I have stated. I have read books. I have read the Bible. And I'm still stating. And what I get is what I share with you. Because what I have is what I give unto you. I cannot give unto you that which I don't have. So I am sharing with you what I have. And I am sharing the experiences that I am going through. No condition is permanent. The trauma you are going through is your wilderness experience. The rejection. The betrayal. The ungratefulness. All these things that you are going through, they are your wilderness experiences. And I want to assure you, it will build up your Christian life. It will mature your Christian life. You become matured. And when you possess your land, you will see of a truth. Indeed, you deserve what you have gotten. I pray for you that your maturity in Christ, you know, let me say this and I close. When we talk about maturity, what does it mean? Your maturity in Christ is measured by your closeness to God. So if you are not close to God, if there is a gap between you and God, it means you are not maturing. Your maturity is measured by your closeness to God. Your closeness to Christ. You know, initially in the days of Moses, God was walking with man, speaking to man. He came to the tent, spoke to Moses, and the face of Moses was shining with the glory of God. But now God is not walking with us. God is staying in, in us, living in us. Christ is in, in us. The glory is not on our facial expression alone. The glory must not be shown on our face. No. The glory must be shown everywhere. From the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Why? Because Christ Jesus is now living in us. And now we are an embodiment of Christ. That is why the Bible says, God cannot dwell in man-made temples, in tents. Now he dwells in, in, the, in his own habitation. And that is the handiwork of Jehovah. And what is the handiwork of Jehovah? We are his, the express image of God. He created us and we are the handiwork of Jehovah. The Lord which you bless you. The Lord extend your course. Share the video to be a blessing to someone. God bless you. And I will be seeing you tonight in our, uh, 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 in our I mean, miracle service at the Covenant Family Center, Agape Word Chapel International. Don't miss it. Tonight is going to be an explosive of power. God is going to move in a mighty way. The prophetic will be locating people. And I pray that your life will never and ever be the same. Continue to follow me. Share the video to be a blessing to someone who is out there. The Lord will bless you and extend your course. Remember, I'll be coming your way with the night of restoration prayer. Our midnight prayers. Our midnight prayers. It is starting from tonight and will be ending on Friday. God will bless you and show his countenance upon your face. I love you, but remember the one who loves you most is our Lord Jesus Christ. See you again coming evening in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus is Lord. Have a blissful midweek. Amen.